What's up everyone? Welcome to part three of our Mask Our CNN tutorial series. And in this one, we're going to look at how to take a video, process it, and add those masks and bounding boxes. So what you see here is a video of some video game play I recorded. And I went ahead and processed it. And you can see we've got masks, we've got bounding boxes. And what's nice about this is it's playing back at its normal speed. So we can play it back at full 60 frames per second. So in this video, we're going to look at how to set all this up. So let's get started. So I got a lot of requests for this in the earlier Mask RCNN videos, and I figure I'd do it because one, it's really not that difficult. We can reuse a lot of code that we did in other videos, and two, the real-time Mask RCNN we did in the previous video, it, it's really not that impressive to look at. When you're only getting like one or two frames per second, it's real choppy and slow. So with this, we can watch the video back at its normal frame rate. Everything looks smooth and it's a little bit more impressive to show someone. So yeah, let's get into it. All right, so the starting point for this video is gonna be some code from the YOLO series. Um, in part three of that, we looked at how to process video and I created this file called down sample video. And what this did was it would take my 60 frame per second video and it would down sample it to 20 frames per second. So basically every three frames, it would remove two of them and just keep one. The reason I did it was YOLO could process video at about 20 frames per second. So I wanted a 20 FPS video so it looked normal when it's processing it in real time. But the key thing is, is we're taking a video, we're opening it and we're reading frames and then we're writing it to another file. And that's basically what we're going to do here. We're going to take some video, we're going to read it. Um, we're going to do some stuff to it and that's going to be adding masks and bounding boxes and then we're going to write it to an output file. So we're just going to take this code and we're going to also take our visualize um, CV code. We're going to sort of merge them together and hopefully it all works out. So I'm going to start by copying this code into a new Python file. So I'm just going to click raw, do control A, control C. I'm going to switch over to Atom and I'm in my mask RCNN directory and I've got a new Python file called process video and I'm just going to go ahead and paste this in and now let's just kind of quickly go through it and clean it up at the same time. So I'm going to get rid of that. So basically what we're doing is we're calling cv2 um, dot video capture and we're specifying a file. So this is our video object and then we're getting the size from it. So we're just reading the height or the width and the height. Then we're specifying a codec and then we're creating this output and this is our output file. So we're going to be writing something called video file. I'm going to clean this up and just call it video masked dot AVI. So we give it a name. We specify the codec, which is right here. We specify the frame rate and the frame size. Cool. And then we can get rid of this stuff here um, and this stuff too. I'm just going to delete this. This was just counting frames and then skipping certain ones that um, just to downsample it all. And we can delete that and let's bring all this up. So now, um, oops, I think I got rid of something I didn't want to get rid of. Yeah. All right, so now basically what this is doing is it's looping over the frames and then it's gonna write the frame to the output file and it's also gonna show it. So basically before we output it, we want to um, take the frames, um, basically add mask to frame. Basically what I wanna do is I wanna import our visualize.cv file I want to import some function and I want to call that function to process the frame and then it return another frame with the mask and then I want to write that to a file. So that's kind of the the basic structure of this thing. So if I go ahead and run this now, what I'm going to do is just um, just going to comment out the stuff that writes it to a file and yeah, so now if I run this it should just display the video. So I've got my video file already in my directory. 
So I'm just going to go ahead and run this. And what did I do wrong? Let's try this again. Okay, cool. So now we're just we're just playing the video back normally. We're not processing anything. We're not doing anything to it. So we've got that working. So now what we're going to do is look at our visualized CV file and we're going to we're probably going to need to modify it a little bit, but we're going to do all that so we can add bounding boxes to our frames. Now what I'm going to do is jump over to our visualize underscore CV file and I'm going to start by duplicating it because we're going to make some changes. So within Atom, I'm just going to right click and oops, not delete. We're going to right click duplicate and we're just going to call it two because yeah. Um, so what I'm going to do is, well, so all of this stuff here, um, all this model loading and all those things we have it down in this if name equals main part So it only loads if we run this file directly It's not going to run if we import it So what I'm going to do is just move all of this outside of that if name equals main part and That way it'll run when we When when we import this file, so I'm gonna do control X come up all the way to the top right here I'm gonna paste so now we've got all this stuff here and yeah so if I let's try and run this just to verify that it's working I might get an error with my camera but that's okay let's try it anyways hey it's working okay so yeah I can run this directly so it's we didn't break it that's the important thing it's still working so I'll go ahead and close this and now what I'm going to do is, well, let's go ahead and look at how this thing works. So once we get the frame, we need to call model.detect and pass the frame. So we're going to need to import model. Then we're going to take our results and just strip a little bit off of it. And then we're going to need to also import display instances. This is some function. And then we're also going to need the class names. So what I'm going to do is jump over here and we'll call from uh, visualize oops visualize to we're going to import model um, display instances and also class names so we've got that and now I'm just gonna copy this stuff here so once we have the frame we need results and all this stuff here so right here where I said add the mask to the frame, I'm just going to put that stuff here. So we're going to take the frame, it's going to go into here, we're going to get, um, we're going to detect it, get our results, strip a little bit off of it, then we're going to display instances. So now this should return a frame with the masks on it. So let's go ahead and run this, see what we get. Again, I'm running this with that virtual environment that everything's set up in. If you're not sure how to set all that up, make sure to watch part one of the series. All right, so we're processing our video in real time. So um, yeah, again, the frame rate, frame rate sucks. We're only getting like one frames per second, but it's working. So one thing that, one thing I noticed is we're getting like, well, the color of the mask can vary. Like even though we get the same thing, sometimes we, um, well, actually it seems like we're getting consistent colors. Actually, no, we're not getting consistent colors. So when there's multiple instances of the person, we're getting like different colors for that person. So um, just to sort of clean this up so that way every person is one color, every car is another color, every object is the same color. We're going to create a dictionary instead of that list of the class names. So that way we have a, the same color for each class name. So now let's just do that part and yeah. So to show how we can get consistent colors for each object, I'm going to demonstrate this in Jupyter just so we can see the output quickly. So first thing I'm going to do is jump back over to Adam and then grab those uh, things that we need. So we need that list of the class names. So I'm going to grab class names and we're also going to need this random colors function. 
So let's jump back over to Jupyter. And first thing we're going to do is import um, numpy as np. So here we've got the class names and we've got our function that's going to give us the random numbers. So I'm just going to run that cell. And now what we're going to do is we're going to create a, well, if you remember random colors, we pass it some number and it's going to give us a bunch of random colors. Um, basically the number of random colors that we specify with N. So, um, the number we're going to want is going to be the length of this. So I'm going to create a list called colors and it's going to be equal to random colors and the number of them is going to be the length of class class names. So now we've got our colors list and we've got our object list. So now what we're going to do is oops. We're going to do what's called a dictionary comprehension. So I'm going to call it class class dict and it's going to be equal to um so we're going to loop over the class names and the colors. So the key is going to be the class name. So I'm going to call it name and the color, we're going to call it color. And it's going to be for name comma color in. And then what we're going to do is we're going to zip the uh, class names and the colors. So now we're going to loop over that zip and fill in our dictionary. So I'll just go ahead and run that and then we'll call our class dict. So now you can see um, for each thing we get a color. So the background is this color, airplane is this color, apple is this one. And this way when we call our class name, we're going to return the color as well. So every time we see that instance, we're going to get the same color just so we can have consistency across the whole video. So now what I'm going to do is jump back over to Adam, implement this, and finally show you how we can write this to the output file. All right, so I'm back in Adam, and I'm just going to copy that code I had made for the dictionary comprehension. So right below class names and the random colors, I'm just going to insert that stuff right here. So the colors is going to be, we're going to call random colors, create the dictionary. Now what we need to do is modify our display instances. So instead of um, looping over the colors, um, we're not going to do that anymore because the colors are going to come from the class dictionary. So instead, we're just going to do range, and this will be n instances because remember, that's the number of objects we detected. So now what we need to do is change, um, well, basically we're going to redefine color. So color is going to come from the class dictionary. So the way it works is we pass in the class type and it'll return the color. So the class type is going to be the label. So right here, right below it, we can just call create something called color and it's going to be the class dict and the key is going to be the label. So now if I save this and run it, so we'll, we'll see the output from the webcam, this should work and we should be getting consistent, um, like the same color for each um, class every time. All right, so looks like it's working. Um, it's hard to test unless you have multiple of an object, but at least it's running, it's not broken. So go ahead and quit that. Um, so now, we can do the same thing over in process video. So um, actually it should just work right out of the box because um, we're going to pass in, we pass in the same stuff and now it's just going to, um, the colors it's going to get from the class dict, which is already built in there. So let's go ahead and run this just to see that it's working. We should see our racing car video stuff. Cool. So you can see the person is the same color here and there. So yeah, it looks like it's working. So now all we need to do is write this stuff to a file. So how do we write this to a file? Well, all we need to do is uncomment out the output file that we create 
and this command to write. So now it's just going to write it to an output file. So if we run this, we should see a new file pop up here um, called video file masked and everything should work. So now let's go ahead and run it. See if we see if we get a file that pops up. Um, this is the one I was displaying before, but um, we should see one pop up right below it. There it is. So the file's created and it's running. So like we're only processing frames at about one to two frames per second, but it's writing those frames to a file. And I know it's going to take a long time to process this, especially because this is 60 frame per second video. You should probably go with like 30 or 25 frame per second video. But yeah, it's going to take a long time. But once it's done, you can play it back at normal speeds. You can post videos on YouTube, show your friends, all that cool stuff. And it'll actually look cool. This is not that impressive to look at one frame per second video. But, but yeah, just spend the time up front and you'll get a nice cool video to share. So that's going to do it for this video, guys. Like always, all this code is going to be posted to my GitHub. There'll be links in the description for everything. If you've got any questions, leave comments below. Don't forget about the Discord server. Um, we've got a, quite a few amount of people in there, and I'm, I'm excited to see some people helping out. Um, I've got an admin named Nick. He's been helping out. Um, can't say thank you enough to him. But yeah, feel free to join, comment, ask questions, or just chat amongst everyone. Um, yeah, so I hope you guys like this video. I hope you find it useful. If you liked it, leave it a like. If you really liked it, hit the subscribe button, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.